Okay, it's day 135 of this honeydew germination experiment. So it's, you know, 5 p.m. here. And there's a little bit more progress, not much. Um, that one flower is still there. So the flowers have five petals. And this one hasn't unfurled completely, not sure that it will. Um, I think there's another flower bud coming out of that very same spot. So vine 2 is well on its way to flowering as well. I think that is three flower buds right there. And here we have another one. So this one looks like it'll have multiple flower buds as well. And the shoot ape colmera stem, um, you know, I can't really make anything out there. So after these flowers get pollinated in the future, then the fruits will form at these nodes and that will mean that all the honeydew fruits will gather at towards the shoot ape colmera stem, which is good because I don't want them, you know, crushing the pot. So I want them to be, you know, on the far end of the vines. Here's another bee corpse on my balcony, so I didn't think more bees would come, but this is definitely not the one that I dealt with earlier, so bees are coming here. It's just, I hope they're not dying from some of those insecticides I sprayed earlier. Okay, it's day 139 of this honeydew germination experiment. So some of the leaves that are touching the ground or were dying for a long time are dying even more in the back. Um, and I'll get rid of those as they die, but uh, the foliage in the front, you know, all the healthy leaves above ground, they look great. You know, you just see a huge fly land on this honeydew leaf. I don't know what that's all about, if it's a pollinator or not. Um, but there's not that much development in terms of flowering action. A vine 2 has a flower, and um, vine 1 is shed a flower already and has a flower that's in bloom now. So here's a flower that's already shed and up here we have a flower that's in full bloom right now and here we have a flower that's in, that's in full bloom so here's an active flower and you know the shoot ape glomer stem of plant one is busy generating yet many more flower structures. And I think this one's on its last legs but there's another flower coming along too. So this is vine 2. I think this flower is about to come into bloom and that's an active flower. So there's just not all that much flowering activity. I hope it really picks up steam and we see you know dozens of flowers if not you know, more in bloom at the same time and that would ensure that cross-pollination can occur between these vines but you know I think all of these came from the same melon so they'd be pretty genetically similar I'm not sure if that's enough to for these to bear fruit so we'll see what happens we'll let the chips fall where they may it's day 140 of this honeydew germination experiment so there's not much to look at here that we haven't seen already, but down here towards the ends of vines 1 and 2, you can see a lot more flowers, especially on vine number 1. So vine number 2, it's still working on three flowers. So this is on vine number 1. The center of the flower is green. Vine number 1. Um, this one is right next to the shoot ape glomera stem. Um, but you know there's a whole bunch of flowering structures coming out here I would say maybe four and here's another one so sometimes it's hard to tell if they're coming or going but I'm gonna say this is three flowers plus a whole lot more on the way so this is vine two there's a flower in progress here closer to the shoot apical meristem here's another one and then you know another node away we have this right here you know I don't know if this one has flowered already or not um, we'll know within the next few days so yeah there's just a bustle of activity now 
I expect a lot more flowering to occur. See, these are all, that's like three flowers right there. You look at that. Oh, I just triggered something, so a flower fell off in my hand. So that means that it had already bloomed. So unlike crepe myrtle or orchids, for example, these flowers don't last very long, you know, just a few. So it has three leaves. So vine number three has three leaves coming out of the same node here, which is amazing. And I wonder if it'll keep doing that for subsequent nodes. And if it does, that'll really help it uh, proliferate a lot faster and catch up with the other two vines. Okay, it's day 146 of this honeydew germination experiment. So the leaves have stopped getting bigger, I would say. Um, they seem kind of brittle these days, you know. Not as lush green as they used to be. I mean, these new leaves, um, newer leaves are healthier, I think. Uh, they're more supple and green. Uh, these old leaves, not too sure. So I'm not too sure if these leaves are getting too much sun or what. These seem like they could be sun damage, sunspots, but you know, this is not any place where I've amplified the amount of light that's hitting the leaves. You know, I've got rid of the solar reflectors for a while and they're still like this, so I think that's just, maybe the sun here is too strong. So this is the shoot apical meristem of vine one and as you can see there are several flowers. I think this one on the left is shriveled up and dying. There's one, two, three you know three active flowers uh, a lot more on the way or shriveling up these don't ver last very long but it seems like they're fairly prolific um, I wouldn't say this honeydew vine has reached a stage where we need to take this outside uh, the other alternative is I could try to just use a small hand brush a paintbrush to pollinate these two plants between vines one and two and see if that bears any fruit um, vine 2 has a uh, shoot apical meristem here, it's kind of in the other direction. It's got, you know, these three active flowers and much more on the way. So this is coming along pretty well, um, although I'm kind of worried about the strength of the sun. I let the water tray dry out a little bit, it's still got water in it. But you know, at this juncture I don't think it's the right time to try to carry this out and put it next to a garden where there's lots of bees. Um, there's just not enough flowers so I suppose all you need is just one flower with one flower but I've been checking every once in a while and I haven't really seen um, you know bees on my balcony past uh, those one or two ones that came early on and just mysteriously died so you know I don't know if they're gonna get the job done I just made a strategic sort of chess move, so to speak. I had my honeydew over here, and I just moved it over to here. So it's against this wall. Uh, that'll give it a lot more shade, like right now it's in the shade, where it would otherwise be uh, baking in the sun still, even though it's very late in the afternoon. It's uh, basically evening past 6 p.m. So all of these leaves were kind of not as green as I, you know, uh, grown used to them being, and you know, there were symptoms before, this was brittle, so when I kind of touched it, it cracked here. And there are these, uh, you know, sunspots. Um, basically, I think these plants are getting too much sun. So I don't know if you've watched my Santa Margarita River Trail review. Um, not many people have, but it's basically infested or overgrown with California wild grapevines, and those get leaves bigger than what I have here and they're very very successful so they're tree climbers um, this is not as good of a climber it has just these weak tendrils it doesn't bind to the tree trunks of other species so I'm thinking this would be a good grower in a riparian habitat but those California grapevines are all covered in shade and I have another video upcoming where you know leaves on a tree are much bigger in the shade and they look a lot more healthy than the ones in the sun um, Maybe this California sun is just too brutal in the summer, so I'm hoping to see some changes. I don't know if I can save all these leaves or will they just kind of stay in this uh, sort of suboptimal state 
for a long time, but we'll see. I mean, one telling sign is that the vines that were here, it's true that they were kind of pointing, you know, in this direction towards the sun, but they were much lower. They were getting shade from this wall, you know. Um, so I think that's why they're doing better. So, you know, when I moved this pot just a minute ago, I expected all the sloshing and splashing uh, to hear all the sounds of water splashing out because I filled this tray to the brim, but that didn't happen because the soil was so dry. You know, a lot of that water, hundreds of mLs, got soaked into the soil immediately through this bottom watering plant spot system.